What makes architecture good isn't decided on paper. It's not all about technical complexity or the materials used. It's about how a place makes you feel when you walk through the front door. And this next incredible tiny house that we're about to visit is a place that I would be more than happy to call home. G'day Evan, how's it going mate? Nice to meet you Bryce. It is great to meet you and all I can say is wow, this is something incredibly special that you've created here, isn't it? Well, thanks very much and welcome to Pumice. So you called it Pumice I'm guessing because it looks like a giant stone? Yeah, well not only that, Pumice is a weird thing, it's a rock and yet it's soft, a rock and it floats and so this is kind of a house but it's not, so you know. What on earth is this made from? How did you do this? Well, it's built on a trailer, a big truck trailer and then we extended the floor, built it out of straw, plastered it, and then suspended the roof over the top. Wow. It's actually amazing to me that this is built on a trailer. Can you tell me how this all came about? Well, we've been lucky enough to build straw bale houses for the last 30 odd years. My business partner and I on this project, Kevin, we know a fair bit about building being builders, but we didn't know anything at all about tiny houses, so that sort of got our interest, and then we overlapped that with my youngest son, Louis, and his best mate, Braden. They came and joined us and we did a couple of sketches and we kind of got underway in a pretty informal capacity really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So normally when I think of straw bale building, I'm still thinking cottage style, quite straight walls, and that is exactly the opposite of what this is. How did you actually do this with straw? The building of straw comes in two sort of processes. One is infill, so you have a structure and then you infill the straw bales. So this building is just load bearing. So we shaped all the straw, compressed it, made it a structural capacity, and then plastered it. And then it's lime plaster, which is used for waterproofing? Lime is our favorite medium because it's super natural. Lime breathes really well, it's water resilient, um, and it's got some really nice healing attributes, so it doesn't crack very much. The shape and design of this home is just so unusual. Can you talk to me about the inspiration behind creating this? We wanted somewhere that we could sit inside at the dining room table and see the mountain. Yeah. That was kind of the design goal. Having built straw bale houses for a long time, it's a fantastic medium to do pretty much any shape you want. So we're not confined by the rigidity of linear materials. So it's kind of a disadvantage because you can literally make it whatever you want. When we take something as elemental as straw, which is a waste byproduct annually available, and we fashion it right from those raw materials right through to this sort of result, it's way harder and it's way more involved but by the same token, it's probably equally as refreshing to be involved with. And there really is just something about the unusual shape that you've created here that just looks so natural. It sort of almost has that very cave-like feel, doesn't it? Yeah, I think a lot of people describe it as an oversized pizza oven. But, <laughs> you know. You've done such a great job with this house and the landscaping as well, and really sort of setting the scene here within the environment. Can you talk to me about all of this incredible landscaping? We like the idea of having it more encapsulated and so you feel more cozy. So we started off with a little bit of a challenge because of the curved roof and we didn't want to have a gutter. So how do we catch the water? So we started off with that simple process, oh, we'll have an open drain. And the open drain got a bit bigger to a pond. And then we wanted to get the water to reflect the light into the roof of the ceiling inside the building. And it just escalated from there. And of course, volcanic rocks, phew, fantastic, can't beat it. So we spent a lot of time with a little digger placing rocks and, you know, and we're spoilt with some dramatic scenery and to feel that you're part of that is tremendous, yeah. Absolutely. I especially love what you've done down there with the fireplace. Yeah, Bryce, it's great what you can do with a one and a half ton rock. It yeah. sure is. And there's something about crossing a threshold of water into your home, which kind of creates this added level of kind of separation <laughs> from the outside, eh? It's like having a little moat. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, we, we have had, had people comment about um, the dangers associated with late night returns from the pub. But, <laughs> you know, it's all seemed to work out okay. It's all worth it for this look, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And what size is the house? The overall dimensions are just over 10 meters long and just over five and a half meters wide. And of course the bales are 500 millimeters thick, so we lose a fair amount in the walls. But because of the undulating nature of the plastered finish, it's really hard for your eye to gauge the exact distance. So by default, it feels uniquely bigger than what it perhaps is. Well, what you've created here really is just so unique and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, come on in. Thank you very much. 
This place is absolutely incredible. It feels like walking into a modern cave or something. Thank you. Yeah, it's come up pretty good. Yeah, I especially just love the way that the ripples from the water outside just creates this amazing effect on the ceiling. Yeah, it was definitely our idea of trying to get that warmth from outside to give us a definition of movement on the undulating plaster. Yeah. yeah, just the shapes in here are incredible. There's, there's something about just everything being rounded. It just makes the whole space feel unusual, but actually really calming at the same time. It's part of the fact your eye doesn't have anything to focus on or against. It's just a soft nature that you're inside. And I love the way that you've complemented the natural shapes in here with the natural materials, using the timber, the core 10 steel, the lime. It all just really feels incredibly natural. We actually crafted all those bits and pieces. So we have more ownership and it just feels really good to everyone that was involved for sure. And there really is a bit of an illusion of space going on because looking from the outside, I would have never expected it to feel so spacious in here. I guess inside it, it is about four and a half meters wide and about nine meters long. And I think the extra volume just helps to give us that sense of space. Absolutely. Mm. This is an incredible couch that you've created as well. Yeah, we wanted to be able to sit next to your loved one and watch TV, see the mountain, still see the fish in the pond, and not for it to be too high in the space. So I think it's, it's pretty good. It yeah. certainly is. Mm. And of course, sitting here on the couch, again, you just capitalize on the incredible view. And I really like the way that you've sort of kept all of this part of the house feeling very cave-like and enclosed. But then from this aspect, it's just completely opened up onto the mountain views. Well, we are so fortunate to have such a great aspect from our little baby section. It's quite interesting how you've got the opening windows really low to the water. Can you talk to me about why you've done that? If you open the windows at the bottom, close to the water, air is always cooler. And so if we open our skylight or we have our fan going, it convex cool air in so the house naturally aspirates. Very clever. Hmm. And the construction of this home really is just so unique. So I love that you've included a truth window in here as well. Well, it's part of straw bale tradition really, because people rock up to your house and go, hey, what's your house made of? And when you say it's made of straw, they go, seriously? And henceforth, you can see. And then behind us here, we've got the kitchen. And I just really like the way that you've done this, sort of having the lime render run straight off the wall and into this kitchen counter. Yeah, it's definitely a bonus of plastering. If you just pay a bit of attention, you can get it to do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you've even sort of included the sink in there. It's just really cool. Yeah, that was a bit of an experiment. We haven't done a sink before, but like with some new chemicals, making the surface really, really hard, it seems to be handling it pretty well so far. Yeah, and then running on from the bench here, we've got your beautiful breakfast bar. Yeah, it was kind of cool because we wanted to suspend this in a waterfall fashion with this one as well. And one of my son's nicks is a really good welder. So he enabled us to sort of suspend stuff out a bit more than we would normally get with wood and whatnot. And then again, just the way that you've done all of the cabinetry and everything here is so unique. Well, when we were in the construction phase, we craned our trailer in and then we built a giant big tent out of timber and plastic so we could work all winter. We built that out of some locally milled Lawson Cypress, that is our favorite timber. And that wood has been used throughout the finishing phases. So all of this was just part of our tent structure. So it's box grade that we happened to put over a custom made cabinetry that again, we just did it all ourselves, yeah. Looks brilliant. Mm. And one of the things that I really love that you've done in here is just make everything artistic. Like all of the really cool drawer handles and the light fittings, everything in here just carries art with it. It does, and that was just part of the fun of it. And that was one of our goals, was just to have fun in the process, and that's a result. And then over here we have the bathroom, and that door just becomes such a feature, doesn't it? Yeah, it works really well. We want it to be a door and a piece of art, and it seems to fit the space. It was a bit of a challenge. We wanted the ceiling to run right through into the bathroom, and so we have this wonky top to the door. But even when it's closed, it seems to, yeah, it works good. It sure does. And can we have a peek in the bathroom? Yeah, come on in. Cool, thanks. Wow. I am a little bit speechless coming into this space, actually. This is just really beautiful. Speechless? That's pretty unusual. <laughs> it sure is. It looks more like it was carved out of rock than built. I think it's that luxury of not having defined edges. We can just curve things, and you just have to have this ability 
to appreciate what it's going to look like at the end because backwards from here there's a lot of work to get those curves to have the flow that appeals to your eye and so there's an art to that there's no doubt about it and again just the way that everything is sort of crafted out of this lime plaster it makes everything incredibly harmonious it's just less crowded maybe it's simpler on our mind i don't know but less is more i guess yeah mm. and Oakuni is of course a ski town mm -hmm. and i am <laughs> noticing the heated floors right now yeah i've got to admit man, that's definitely one of my favorites eh? every time i walk in here it's like oh that was a good decision. It was a yeah. very good decision. Yeah. We've run the heat up the back of the seat as well. So when you sit in the seat in the shower, the seat's warm, which is a bit of a treat. Absolutely. And then again, the way that this is created, it feels very cave-like, but then you've got this lovely amount of light which is coming in through the skylight. Late in the day, the sun actually does come into the room. So sun in any space is a complete luxury, let alone sun in the south side of a wet area bathroom. Uh, that's golden. Yeah. And you've got the flushing toilet in here as well? We're hooked up to the services. It's as simple as that. You know, we're just um, a little urban environment in an urban town and okay, has got great services. And then around the corner we've got the bedroom, don't we? Yes. Cool. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. I love the way that you've added the flax here as well. And it's really nice that you've got the curtain rail that can give you a little bit of extra privacy in here if you want it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it really private. And we also borrowed the flax out of the landscaping, out of the uh, front hedge. And then the bedroom. This really is just such a cozy nook of the house. It is. It's really cozy, particularly with no direct windows. It's really nice. Yes. The whole house has that cave aesthetic, but you really especially feel it in this part. I think it comes back to the fact that there is no definition between the wall and the roof. You know, it's all just encompassed in that curvy nature. So that sense of safety and security is definitely all encompassing. And if the fire's going and we pull the curtain, it's, uh, yeah, it is pretty luxurious for sure. So this is a fire here. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, it's um, a bioethanol fire. So we wanted something that we didn't have to have a chimney, so to speak. So we just have open flames, again, against the plaster. And it gives a beautiful natural glow. It's lovely. So it doesn't need a chimney. What about fumes or anything like that? Um, the fumes are so minimal that it's completely safe inside this volume of building. Mm -hmm. That is really cool. Yeah. Again, I just love all of the art in here. The way that you've incorporated these big wooden features is really cool. And then once again, use the plaster to kind of tie this into the rest of the home. We live on the coast and driftwood is a huge part of walking up and down the beach, which we do a lot of. So all those sort of elements just combine to the fact that it's nice for us to make it out of something that we can relate to and it's been a big part of our lives. For sure. Definitely, mm. definitely. And then what's this here? Um, we just wanted a strong element inside the space, sort of a bit of a break from the plaster. And Cortine steel is one of our favorites because it blends so well with our plaster. And it's the face of the wardrobe. Very cool. Now, earlier you mentioned having a television, but I actually can't see one in the house. <laughs> So we've positioned it on the back of the headboard. No way, there's a TV behind yep. that. So we just wheel that guy out so it can come out in front of the sofa. It can come into a location in front of the bed, you know, so it's pretty movable. That is such a clever idea. And I would have never guessed that it was hiding behind there. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. And how long has the home been finished now? We finished it in 2021, yeah. Great, and what's it like to live in? That's delightful, it's really, really good. It's a great place to come and stay for any amount of time, even if it's just an express overnight visit, or we can stay for a bit longer. It's really, really enjoyable. We get really used to building regular size buildings. And when we get the opportunity to build small, compact, and more intimate, it gives you a different level of responsibility to make it even more intimate and more creative, and almost more sublime in the subtleties that we can create because they're probably going to be noticed a bit more. In any small space, we've got more things going on in a close proximity. So we want to make sure that they all blend and talk together really well. And being a straw home, this just must be so well insulated. The straw gives us about five times that required by the code. But also we've got really good insulation in the floor, the joinery is thermally broken. So the whole envelope is pretty spectacular for sure. Can you talk to me about how long it actually took to build this? It took over 5,000 hours of combined hours. So that's plumber, electrician. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah. And that being said, can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this home? We broke the cost up into two areas. One is pre-construction. So to buy the section, get the appropriate consents and permissions, build the retaining wall. And that came in just under $90,000. 
and then we spent around about $128,000 on materials. Given that we did have a fair bit of stuff in our yard, you know, the curved rafters and whatnot, they just came out of the stack at the back of the yard. Being involved with anybody's project is a luxury, but to be involved with your own project right from the very get-go, right all the way through and finally get to the end, man, it's golden. It is. When we visit Pumice, hey, it's plaster. It's a, it's a house. But because of our connection of the whole process of the little things that my son Louis was involved with or my daughter Phoebe or having the luxury of bringing my family to the mountain, the essence of all of those things and my friends and my family that have arrived and come and go, it makes it something so valued that it's hard to describe the depth and the essence of what Promise portrays for me. So now this project is complete, you must have another exciting project on the horizon? Uh, yep, we've got four or five houses on the go at the moment for clients and we've got some other aspirations for this property as well, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, Evan, what you've created here really is incredibly special. I love this modern edge combined with these really natural materials and the whole space just comes together to feel really good. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. Appreciate that. My pleasure. You can unquestionably tell when a house is built with love and this is absolutely one of those homes. You can tell that Evan is an incredible builder, very, very talented, very creative and artistic, but when you're inside this home, you can also tell that it's so much more than that. You can sense the family memories of holidays, skiing on the mountain. You can sense a whole home which has been built around a desire to sit at a table with a partner and have a view. All of that is encapsulated into this house that just makes it so much more than just a house.